Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the ginormous Carf MIG. This is build video number three in the series, four if you include the unboxing video. We have made some great strides on the fuselage and we've made some great strides on the wings which are right behind us. So stay tuned and we will continue with the front portion of the fuselage of this aircraft. All right guys, last video we basically got the wings completed, which was a huge portion of it. Now what we need to do is we need to move on to the front landing gear and the doors first. And so that's gonna be the first part of this video and then we'll move into the equipment installation. We are still waiting on the cockpit and the lighting system for this aircraft. So when that shows up, we'll start to wrap this build up. It's been a great build so far. Awesome kit, amazing kit. It uh, goes together quite well, quite quickly. There's still a lot of tricky things to come, like the cockpit installation I've heard is a bit of a chore. So that'll be interesting, but let's dive back into the front landing gear. All right, so there is the beautiful front landing gear. Definitely a piece of a work of art on this thing. Uh, amazing, amazing looking piece. So we've got the NG gear on the front. This really interesting looking trunnion going on here. The mounts for the doors, servos are right down there. We've got a matching one on the other side. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna hook this gear up. We're gonna drop it down and that'll give us room to install the doors, I think, or the, the door servos, and also hopefully get good access for the, uh, the steering servo. So that's step number one. We'll hook this thing up and see how she comes down. All right, so we've got it hooked up here. We'll give it a cycle. Beautiful. So there's not a lot of room between the, uh, the door hinge there, but uh, there's enough for it to work. So that is a uh, very cool, beautiful looking landing gear. And uh, the spring preload on it is, is quite soft. You can see there, uh, I'm just operating it with one hand and hardly any force. So the, the nose on this is very, very light from videos I've seen. So first thing we'll probably do here is get the steering servo hooked up. I'm thinking might be the best first step. And then we will start to focus on those gear doors. All right guys, so this is the first, uh, first kick at this uh, nose linkage. I don't know if I'm overly happy with it. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it works, it works okay. I, I'm just, I don't know. I think what I'm going for here is I'd like to get uh, this ball joint a little bit closer on the servo arm. And in order to do that, like there's not a ton of movement in the actual leg, like this is our movement here. Um, but in order to do that, I need to get the servo arm turned uh, one more notch or maybe two more notches. Um, so I'm gonna play around with that a little bit. That's gonna require to uh, shorten this linkage up but I'm gonna uh, probably move that one more notch and then drill another hole a little bit closer to the, uh, the output shaft of the servo. All right guys, so modified this a little bit. I took seven millimeters out of the, uh, the linkage length. I turned this one notch and I'm happier with the layout of this now. Uh, bringing that uh, pivot point on the servo arm in a little bit also requires you to increase the servo travel so you get better resolution with the servo. So anyways, this all worked out better. And then what I did was uh, retracted the gear and just checked where I could run the servo wire. And so this is the best spot for the servo wire. And I'll show you here when we retract this. So it completely keeps it out of the way of everything. And then we're, we're nice and uh, reasonably snug right here. And I just used uh, electrical tape, a little bit of CA to hold that in place. And I think it's a great setup. Perfect. All right, we're gonna move on to the door servos now. And for those, 
Same as the main gear doors, we're using uh, MKS HV747s. Again, great servo for this purpose. Uh, tons of power and uh, a little bit overkill, but perfect. All right, so we've got the servo installed there and uh, pretty straightforward. I ended up using those 15 millimeter Seacraft arms that uh, I didn't use on the main gear doors and they work out perfectly for the nose gear doors. We've got a Dubro uh, ball on one side, on the Seacraft side, so that's the two millimeter ball with the 440 or uh, I guess three millimeter rod going into the clevis. So we're nice and straight there and uh, as far as the angles and stuff go, so that's the uh, closed position and we're gonna open the door and there's open. So hard to tell from this angle, but that whole scenario is in a straight line and uh, works out good. Uh, everything, uh, everything's nice and solid. Pretty nice, simple door setup. I'll just close it as well here. There we go. So works awesome. And uh, that's one side done. And then what we'll do is we'll match the, uh, the other one exactly the same. All right guys, gear doors are both complete and they're both working very, very well. Uh, just put the tray back in here just to see how it looks. And uh, there is our setup. So I also fastened the wires here just along with the uh, same path as the nose steering wire. And uh, again, we just mounted those with black electrical tape and a little bit of CA. And then we've got our plugs just hanging down right there. So nice and clean. So as I mentioned, we are jumping around a little bit with this aircraft because of parts, right? So uh, next thing in my brain that I think we want to get done is we want to get all the wing wiring completed. Now, what we're going to do with the wing wiring is we're going to make our hole in the wingtip light. We're going to run our wire for the wingtip all the way to the base. And uh, the last thing we'll have to do with the wings when we get it is the drop down light here. Now, I actually just noticed this uh, based on these wings, I'm assuming there's one drop down light here, not two, because this side is different. So anyways, we'll have just a drop down light in that wing. Uh, then we're gonna run all of our servos. And then once our light's mounted here, then we're gonna run all of our, and once our wire for the light is run, we're gonna start mounting all of our, or getting all of our servo leads connected. And again, run to the root of the wing. Now I think the path we're gonna take this wire is we're going to uh, have all the wires come down the servo areas and then we'll come out of this uh, hole by the gear here and then we'll just follow where the, uh, the brake lead and the gear lead go. So we'll go underneath, underneath the gear and that has a nice clear path right into the root of the wing, which will, be, uh, which will be good. So that's probably the easiest path to take for the wires. So that is what we are going to, uh, to do. Okay, so I've cut all my power box maxi wires. So these are for the lights. This is for the flap or aileron, sorry. And this is for the flaps. So we've got all those done. For the light wires, we're gonna have two for power, positive and negative. And then there's a third wire, which we'll use the white one for. And that is for the, uh, I think the flashing or the, cause there's a green light and then the white lights. So anyways, the wingtip lights require three wires. So let's get these wires run to the root of the wing. All right, so just working on the wiring on the, the right wing here. So we've got all the wiring run. What I did with the light here is I know the light has uh, like a fin. So we just did a long slit here, ran the, uh, the light wire through and obviously it's taped down for now. Those wires come to this point and then come to the, uh, the flap area. And then once it gets to the flap area, we installed snake skin uh, as it goes through all of this gear mess and uh, it's gonna go into one of the holes right here where the other wires are run, and then these will all pop out the, uh, the housing like that. So just looking at that, I th yeah, we should have plenty of room there. So that's one wing uh, wiring almost done, and uh, once that's fastened down and run properly, then we will put the covers on. Uh, those are pretty simple, just drill four holes, screws go in there, hold that down, simple stuff. All right, so both wings are now complete. We've got all the wiring run on both wings. 
Now what we're going to do on this particular setup is we're going to do a bit of a combination here. So number one, we're using the Emco Tech connectors. This is going to be the one that's on the fuselage side. And then this is the one that's on the, the wing side. So it's kind of like an MPX connector, just bigger with eight pins. And uh, it's got these nice solder joints and everything on them. So this is going to be for the gear door, the landing gear, and the brake is all going to go to that. So we've got seven pins. There's going to be one spare pin that we're not using. And then our actual surfaces along with the light are going to run through a nine pin ash lock connector like we normally would do. And uh, so that's going to be the combination there. Took a piece of paper, stuck it up against here with a hole through it, made a template. And then on the fuselage side here, didn't draw it out because you don't need to draw it out, but I just put the four dots of the corner. Now, generally, I would always use the ash lock connectors on the wings, but because we've got such a nice big space here, uh, we're going to use the Emcotec connectors because uh, we've got lots of space and it's going to be pretty handy to have that as a as a nice connector. So um, that's what we're doing on this wing, getting this stuff organized. So we're cutting off the brake and the, uh, the gear lead like this, and then we're gonna solder everything on this point. All right guys, and there it is. The wings are on the MIG for the first time. She looks absolutely awesome. Very, very big plane. That is just phenomenal. So we've got all the wing wiring done and uh, pretty straightforward. Again, we've got the ash lock connector. We've got the, uh, the MPX style connector. So very simple to work with. We are missing still the connector for the light system, but uh, that went together very nicely. Now the wings are really easy to put on. I was going to do a gear cycle here, but we don't have the gear doors hooked up. So we'll just wait until we get things planned out a little bit. Now we get to move on to fitting the mess inside the plane. And that's where things get a little bit challenging. All right, working away on the equipment layout here. And I think we got a decent plan so far. So this is the main tray. Obviously we've got our power box Royal mounted. We've got our GS200 mounted with three different through fittings. These are a new size through fitting and these ones are on the website. They're a one inch one and these ones are five eighths, I believe, but they're a little bit nicer and smaller uh, diameter, obviously. And uh, that's kind of our main equipment layout as far as the, the majority of the equipment in this aircraft. So other thing I did was put the piece of wood there. That's two layers of, I think, quarter inch maple. And that's been high sawed to the side of the fuselage. That is where the fuel pump is gonna mount. So the UAT is sitting right there. That feeds the fuel pump. And then we've got the four millimeter line from the fuel pump coming up to our on off valve up here. And then it's gonna flip around and go back to the turbine. So it uh, still allows us to have full access from everything uh, on the, the front hatch and uh, decent so far. So what, as I've talked about already before, one of the downsides with this aircraft is everything is kind of exposed. There's not a lot of wiggle room to hide stuff except under the main tray, but there's, there's really not a lot of areas to get underneath the main tray. So we have to do a little bit of a different layout compared to normal and be a bit more mindful on wire placement and equipment placement, so. All right guys, I talk about it in all my builds when we get to this point when we're organizing equipment, it takes me a long time. But an hour ago, my wife got home. I had the music blaring here in the shop, didn't hear her. I was on this side of the aircraft with my head just buried in there and I was just sitting there staring, <laughs> not doing anything and she came up behind me and scared the crap out of me. So, that's honestly what I do. I sit there and I stare and I think it's pretty ridiculous. But we've come up with some good locations for things. So the reason I put the fuel pump closer to the front is I, I wanna minimize the amount of uh, length from the fuel pump back to the engine. So for putting the on off valve up here, uh, you know, we're kind of 
uh, minimizing it. If we put the fuel pump back here, then we're gonna have another two feet of line, right? So not a huge deal on the pressure side, but just something to be aware of. So we've mounted the fuel pump on our piece of maple that we added yesterday. Uh, I've got everything hooked up to the UAT here. We've got an eight millimeter clip there. Um, the line comes out of the fuel pump, goes almost vertical there. And we've got the fuel filter clipped into one of our fuel filter holders. So this line is gonna come up like this, over to our on off valve, and then head back to the engine. So that is where we're mounting that. We've got the uh, data relay module, or some people would call it the ECU, mounted right there. Reason it's right there is it kind of splits the difference. So we've got one of the leads there coming up to the fuel pump and we are just long enough to make it to the fuel pump. The other lead comes out and goes through the through fitting and comes up right down in front of the, uh, the main tank there and goes up to the engine right here. Now, none of the wires are really fastened right now. So yes, this is flopping around, but we will deal with that. So I think what I'm gonna do on this particular one is we're gonna get all the wiring, like these, uh, the right gear wiring here, just uh, installed. So I'm gonna do as much of the wiring as I can and just have it laid in place. And then we'll see what the best, best methodology is. Um, if I put down uh, one of my servo wire keepers or if we wrap it in black electrical tape and CA it down, uh, I just want to uh, get everything run and, uh, and go from there. So I'm not gonna really fasten anything or most things down until we get all of the stuff run. So next thing I'm gonna do here is complete our wiring coming from the back end. Now that's gonna come down and we'll come under the plate right there and then we'll come out the big through fitting right here because all of those wires from the back, uh, except the light wire is getting plugged in here. All right guys, bit more progress made. Uh, finished running all the plumbing for the turbine. Well, not everything, we have to actually still run the line to the turbine but we've uh, also run the fill line here as well. And uh, what I did was I ran a piece of six mil uh, Festo tubing up to here and then put a connection. So we have our Tigon filler here and uh, that is sitting in this area. So when you pull the top hatch off, nice easy access to our fill line. I've also filled up the UAT. Now the UATs, you, you pretty much will always wanna have fuel in them. If you drain them dry, what happens is now your filter element or your sock or whatever type you're using now is gonna have air in it. And it takes a little bit of time to actually get that air out. So what I like to do if I can in this portion of the build is get them full. So now they're sitting and when we run the turbine for the first time, we'll get all the air out. And uh, we've got about the tank, uh, about a third to halfway full over there on the main tank. And that's where we're gonna have it for our CG check. Um, we may fill it up even more, but that's a reasonable landing amount of fuel for this aircraft. And then we've got most of our wiring done for the servos and surfaces. The last things we have to do is to run the wing wiring. So we're gonna run the wing wiring down with this gear bundle, and it's gonna to come to this location here, and then we're gonna have it go down underneath the plate, and then back up through our through fitting right here to go to the power box. Now all of our light leads so far are just sitting in this area as well too, so our light controller can go somewhere in this area. And then we've got the same thing on the uh, the other side of the, uh, the aircraft as well. But the wiring so far has been actually very, very clean, pretty straightforward. Front section here, don't mind the, uh, the satellites, but we've run our uh, some wire keepers. These are the ones that I stock. So we've run the eight wire keepers going forward and then cut them in half and split them going up. So now we've got lots of, uh, lots of options for running wires. It's nice and clean, easy to service, easy to remove. So, so far happy with everything. Uh, back here, our connection is done to the rear portion of the aircraft. And also our turbine lead here is plugged into the ECU. And we've just got this Velcroed onto the, the tank uh, items. And that goes nicely underneath the plate too. So all in all, very clean setup so far. Um, I haven't been uh, really tackling this 
with a full head of steam. What I've been doing is putting a lot of thought into this. Like I was gonna mount these guys down already, but because we have to run these other wires with it, I'm just kind of taking my time with that. So we're essentially just gonna finish up that portion of the wiring. And that's kind of uh, all we can do at this point until our lighting kit, cockpit and pilot shows up. All that stuff's en route. So we're just waiting for those items. But uh, once we get this wiring done, then we will uh, take a final look at it. All right guys, so the last step that I can work on here is getting the front equipment tray uh, laid out. So that's what I've kind of done. We're basically putting the power box royal display right there. We're gonna have the, uh, the power switch sitting right here. Now, neither of these leads are long enough, so we've got two extensions coming, one for the display, one for the uh, power box on off switch. Uh, we will have to add probably a battery uh, switch for the lighting system in this area. So we need to be able to do that. So we've got some expanse, uh, expansion area right here. And then we're gonna uh, mount the GSU for the turbine up front here as well too, because it's gonna be open. It will work well just to have that mounted in the plane. So that's kind of the layout we're going for here. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this tray out and that's gonna allow us to uh, have decent, easy access to everything. Uh, for the GSU, what I did was I put a, uh, I put a plug right there and that runs to the, uh, the data relay module. So, and of course it's marked with GSU, so we can have this lead plugged in to right there when we get the tray put in. All right, so we got the board all complete and uh, other than probably the power switch for the lighting system. So that's been all installed and uh, nice and compact, functional and works good. So there's the back side there. So all these wires, we're gonna leave these two wires until we get our extension cables and then we'll get those organized. Uh, the GSU wire, we're just gonna uh, basically tape it in place and leave just enough to plug in to the little GSU port that I showed you on the side of the intake. I think I've talked about this before, but this would definitely be a good tip time. And this tip time today is brought to you by trusty bent screwdriver. All right, this episode's tip time. I think I've talked about this before, but when I put my screws through the board and plate, for the different items like the RTL screws, the power box screws, that kind of stuff. I like to cut them off and then you don't have to worry about the, uh, the sharp edges or the points or anything like that. And the easiest way to deal with these things is a nice pair of snips or side cutters and you just get it close to the base and it's helpful to have this tipped over. I like to do it inside my garbage can and pretty easy to snap those screws off. They pop off with quite a bit of force. So uh, if you're holding them upright like this and you snip them, they're gonna go shooting across your workspace. And generally with those side cutters, if you get a decent enough pair that is quite close, you'll be able to, to cut it almost flush with the board. If you wanna take it one step further, you could sand that down with a Dremel, but I find that that at least gets rid of the, uh, the excess screw hanging out. All right, so our board is now mounted, and what I've done is I've also run the fuel line going to the turbine. So it comes from the pump through the filter up to the on-off valve, which is up here, and then loops around back to the turbine. Now we've got the line held in place with our 3D printed holders. Again, these are available on our website. Super easy to add because you just CA them in place and the line goes nicely across the formers and plugs in to the turbine. So that is one more step also done. And you can see here the GSU, we're just plugged nicely into the GSU plug. Uh, this I held on the underside with electrical tape and a little bit of CA, and that again works awesome. So underneath the tray here, nothing's hanging down when we're all done. Uh, these power box cables coming from the on off switch and the display, we're gonna be running these uh, nicely down out of the way of the gear. And uh, the servo does come up kind of in this area, so we just need to run those off to the side and uh, we'll deal with that though once we get our extension cables. And this gives you a bit of perspective on what we, go on, what we got going on here. So 
When we take this hatch off, we'll have access to everything to run the plane. Uh, the only thing that we'll have is the batteries are gonna be down there. So we'll have to just pop the cockpit off, which is easy. This just slides forward, uh, unnotches itself. There's no screws, no bolts, no nothing. And this whole assembly will pop out. So that is good. But uh, for, your, for daily flying, this is everything we need access to right here. All right guys, and as a last step in this video, we installed our cannons. Now, the kit comes with uh, three carbon tubes. These are the same size, and that is, uh, I think these are 20, I just, I just watched a video on it, I think 23 millimeter cannons, and I think this is like 37. So there's a walk around video on YouTube. Great shots of the, uh, of the side here, so I just based how far I inserted these on what I saw in the video. And then same thing on this side as well too. In the video it shows the, the cannon coming kind of just to the front edge of the door. Some of the pictures I've seen online, uh, I'm not sure where they came from, but this cannon looked like it was sticking out past the uh, front of the aircraft. Kind of looked goofy when I had it there. So anyways, I've gone off that video. Uh, they're a pretty tight fit to get them in there, but what I'm gonna do is just wick a little bit of thin CA along here. And uh, we don't want to use high saw or anything like that because, you know, if they get bumped or knocked or anything like that, we want the, the CA just to release and be able to, uh, to re-glue it. So uh, not an overly crazy, uh, crazy part, you know, not structural, doesn't need to be permanently high sawed in place. So we're just going to wick a little bit of CA and the cannons will be mounted. All right, guys, perhaps this might even be a better tip time. A uh, few of you guys have asked about the different high saws that I use. So let's take a look at the different high saws I use and I'll talk about the why. All right, so these are the three different uh, types that I use. Uh, 9462, this is probably, probably my all time favorite. Uh, it is, uh, it's kind of that creamy color. Uh, it's probably the strongest option of these three, but I think the E20 HP is very similar. But uh, the, the benefit of the 9462 is it, uh, it's got a long working time. So it doesn't really toughen up um, for about uh, two to three hours after you mix it. Now, if you do heat it before you mix it, then it toughens up a little bit quicker, but it's kind of 24 hours full cure. So it takes quite a while. Uh, the EAE 20 HP, now this is a two to one ratio cartridge. So you'll see that the uh, one size is, is twice as much or twice as big as the, uh, as the other one. So you do need the specific um, plunger for that. I like this one because it's a 20 minute work, li work life. So it kind of kicks off a little bit quicker. It's kind of has the consistency of Vaseline. It reminds me a lot of West System 610. Now I know I didn't call this high saw, but uh, I do use this quite often as well too. It's a little bit of a pain to dispense. That's why I don't really pull it out very often, but uh, this is also a great product as well. But I've been using the uh, 20 HP quite a bit lately because it does kick off a bit quicker, which I like. Now this one, the five minute one, uh, not a huge fan of this stuff um, for a couple reasons. Number one, it stinks. Uh, it's got like a, like a, that epoxy with vinegar kind of smell. It's just, it's a stinky product and uh, it does kind of kick off in five minutes, but it never really gets good. It uh, kind of always stays gummy. So you wouldn't want to try and paint over this because it doesn't accept paint very well. The other ones do. So not a huge fan of this. I don't use it very often and uh, but I, I do have, I think, what do we got here? Two tubes, three tubes actually sitting in my toolbox. So, um, but if I have like a, uh, a plate to mount on the bottom of, an, a bottom of an aircraft that a smoke pump's gonna mount to or something like that, that's where this kind of works well, but um, you know, nothing structural, nothing like that. So those are the different high saws that I use. And uh, you know, they all kind of serve a, a good purpose. If I was to suggest one, uh, probably my favorite lately has been this guy here, uh, the, the two to one 20 minute stuff. I find it kind of works for everything. It works great for uh, structural items, it's strong. Um, 
yeah, it's, it's a great product. This is probably one of my favorites. One of the reasons I'm not a huge fan of 9462 right now is at our local hobby shop, this has doubled in price. So um, this is the last tube I have, but uh, for most stuff I've been using the, the 20 minute stuff and it works awesome. All right, guys, and that kind of is a good segue into last little bits that we're going to do on this MIG for the uh, for this video. So let's talk about it. Uh, last thing I'm going to actually do on the aircraft is with the front hatch here, but I'll just show you kind of the other things that uh, we're going to do probably in the next video. So we're just going to add a couple scale bits here. Now, this is the left side of the aircraft. I watched a, uh, a video yesterday on a walk around of one of these things just to get the position for the uh, the cannons. And uh, these are like holes or whatever. So we're not gonna actually make holes here. We're gonna paint these black. And uh, that'll be a pretty simple way to deal with that. Kind of a nice little touch. And then one other nice little thing to do is on the right side of the aircraft here on the tail section. This is where the, uh, the chaff or I, I think something like that. I can't remember exactly what they called it, but there's four black circles here where those things would shoot out. And then there's four corresponding colored circles that go over top of it. And what the fellow said in the video was uh, in the cockpit, there was the four buttons in the cockpit and uh, the pilot could push red and it would shoot red stuff out, anti-flare stuff or anti-whatever. And uh, I'm not a, not a super aircraft whiz nut type guy. So anyways, that are, are a couple little small kind of neat scale details that we're gonna add to this plane as well. The ones at the back of the, uh, the vertical stab there, we're just gonna do in vinyls most likely. And I think that'll be a decent way to do it. All right, guys, last portion of the MIG in this video is going to be dealing with the front hatch and just some ideas for the front hatch. Now, uh, there's been some guys that have just left the pin system here. The pins are accessible through the cockpit right there. And those pins, there's two of them, one, two, they hold this front hatch in place. And there's some guys that have added these tabs that I've already added on there and put magnets in there. And uh, some guys say that the magnets work great. Some guys are saying that the magnets aren't strong enough. So um, that's it. So the only time that this would be an issue with the opening and closing canopy is let's say you came down from a flight and your front hatch is on, your canopy's closed, and you want to turn off your plane or refuel your plane, and you go to not say canopy open, and the canopy doesn't open. It's stuck closed because maybe the, the linear actuator burnt out or the mechanism's wrong or something like that. That would be the only time that there would be an issue with the, the stock method um, of having these pins mechanically open and close. So, I'm not entirely sure what we're gonna do at this point. We have added our tabs here and uh, we'll see. We may go the magnet route. We may go the hidden uh, spring pin assembly route. We just need to, uh, to see what's gonna work best for that. Um, currently, Danny from the F1 uh, Rocket Jet Factory or, or Aero Panda, he's working on one of these as well too and he is working out a solution for spring-loaded pins. So we'll see what Danny comes up with. We're still waiting on the cockpit and lighting kit for this aircraft, so we do have some time to wait for it, but uh, that's it for this video. We are basically very close to being done this MIG. Uh, the only things left to do are cockpit installation, of course, operating canopy, and light installation as well too. So we've got that stuff to deal with. There's a couple small final details like wiring and all that kind of stuff. That all adds up as well too, but fuselage is done, wings are done. We've got some programming checks left to do, but uh, this plane went together very speedily and it's pretty stinking awesome. So that's everything for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you are watching this video and you're not a subscriber, check down below. Uh, if it says you're a subscriber, great. If not, hit that subscribe button down below. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.